magnify the Lord. I just came to magnify the Lord. I just came to glorify his name. I just came to glorify his name. I just came to glorify his name. Thank you, Lord God, we bless you. Our God is lifted up with the sounding of the trumpets. Our God is lifted up with a voice of praise. Our God is lifted up. Our God is lifted up. Our God is lifted up. On high let the trumpets make a joyful noise. Let's clap our hands and praise the Lord. Our God is lifted up. Our God is lifted up. Our God is lifted up. On high, let the trumpet make a joyful noise. Let's clap our hands and praise the Lord. Our God is lifted up. Our God is lifted up. Our God is lifted up. Is lifted up. On high, oh hallelujah, Lord, we worship you. We worship you. We give you praise and thanksgiving and adoration and praise, and we worship you. And we give you thanksgiving. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. You know the devil, the devil don't allow no praise in here. The devil don't allow no praise in here. But we don't care what the devil don't allow. We're going to praise our God anyhow. Oh, sandaraboko silavaka romanda legelista vakanda. Hallelujah. Well, I... Hallelujah. Today is, is today the 10th, November the 10th, and the year is racing by us. Hallelujah. So the year is almost gone. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. I just want to go over just a couple of things. I want to go back over Sunday, where we were on Sunday. You know, we were talking about uh, the issue of how, you know, how do you get out of difficulties if you find yourself in a very difficult situation you know how do you get out of those difficult situations and we talked about that on sunday and i encourage you to go back and listen to to our uh, sunday we're both on uh, uh, it's archived on facebook and it's also on our our youtube channel covenant christian center of odessa and uh, please feel free to go back and and uh, look at those things but what we, we kind of gave an order of things the first of the item of the order is, is, is that you have to be saved. You know, if you're going to expect God to help you, you got to accept God. you got to accept His offer of salvation. That was number one. Number two, you know, the Bible says repent and be baptized, you know. Well, you know, that's not just talking about water baptism. It's talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So you got to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And then you got to begin to activate it. you got to begin to pray in the Spirit. You know, you want to, and, and pray in the spirit, it activates the power of the Holy Ghost on your behalf. It demonstrates your faith in God. It demonstrates your belief in God. It demonstrates your belief in who he is and his ability to, to move on your behalf. The word says that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. Howbeit in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. And so that, that one of the things that happens when you begin to pray in tongues is you demonstrate that you're in agreement with God. You demonstrate that you're believing that, he, that you are speaking mysteries, and he's going to give you a revelation of those mysteries. In 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14, it says, Let him that prayeth in an unknown tongue uh, also pray that he may interpret. So you can not, not just pray in tongues, not just pray the mysteries, but receive interpretation of, of, of what it is. It demonstrates your faith in God. It demonstrates your belief in his word. It demonstrates your belief in his spirit that, and, and his ability to, to move on your behalf. It demonstrates that you want the leadership and the counsel of the Holy Ghost, which is a big deal. You know, I want the leadership of the Holy Ghost. I want the friendship and the counsel of the Holy Ghost. It demonstrates my belief in the Holy Ghost, who has a present-day ministry, and that we can activate those things. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. So I just, you know, listen, there's no substitute for praying in tongues. The believer needs to pray in tongues, especially if you have something you're praying about that you don't know what the answer is. You don't know what the solution is. And you need the solution. You need to pray in tongues. You've got to be praying. You've got to be praying in tongues. So I just, I encourage you that. The third thing we talked about, you know, was the necessity of repenting for your part in situations and circumstances of how you got where you are. And listen, we're, we are all have a responsibility uh, to, to, to repent of our part in situations and circumstances, even if you don't recognize what it is. And, you know, repentance just means, you know, I recognize the error of my ways. I recognize that something's wrong. I did something wrong, even if I don't necessarily know what it is. 
And I repent of that and I turn. Repentant means to turn and move off in another direction. It means to, to recognize the error of my way and I'm turning 180 degrees. I'm turning the other direction and I'm moving off in the other direction. So to repent, you know, in, in uh, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1, it talks about the elementary things. What are the elementary things? And the writer of Hebrews is actually ministering to a group of people. And what he's saying, he said, you're bogged down in the elementary things and you need to move on. You know, you can't learn anything about the doctrine of Christ until you get out of the elementary things. And the first one he lists is repentance. You know, that, that there's, a, there's a place of, 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 of repentance. So you want, want to do that. Um, and so those are those are key things to pray in the tongue, pray pray in the spirit. But the one I really want to focus on tonight for just a minute is confession. Is is the the necessity to activate your uh, confession? And the Lord spoke this to me. This is sometime back. He said, you know, Psalm twenty six. I'm sorry, Psalm one hundred and twenty six says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues were singing. Yeah. Then said they among the heathen that the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears will reap in joy, and he that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seed, will doubtless return again, bringing his sheaves with him. The, 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 there, there's a place of turning again of the captivity. The Lord said, when I turn the captivity, the place I begin is in the mind. I begin Amen. with turning the captivity in the mind. If I can't turn the captivity in your mind, there's nothing I can ever do. So the Lord said, it is your responsibility to receive my word. It's your ability to receive it into your mind and to allow me to change your mind. Because if you're a captive in your mind, it doesn't matter what happens to you in the natural realm. You're going, you're going to be a captive. On the other hand, if you're free in your mind, it's just a matter of, of time before you ever get to the point where those burdens and the, the obstructions and the things that are in your way and the circumstances and situations are gone. It's just a matter of time where those things are gone and you go forward. So the battleground, the place of the turning of the captivity is in the mind. And probably one of the most important, one of the most important tools that we were given as Christians to be able to, 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 to cement that in our minds was the doctrine of confession. And uh, in uh, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, it says that Jesus is the apostle and the high priest over your confession, over your profession. The words, the words translated profession in some translations, it's confession in others. It's the same word. They, they, change, they, 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 they translate the same word, either profession or confession. So Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, he's describing one of the present day functions of Jesus Christ. See, when Jesus Christ went to heaven, he didn't, and, 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 and was seated, and went seated at the right hand of God the Father, it didn't mean that his work was done. It meant that his work changed. His work on earth was done. But he began to take over his new role as, uh, his, as uh, and take over the duties and obligations that he had in his present-day ministry. And one of the most important functions of his present-day ministry is to be the author and the finisher of your confession. That he is the apostle and the high priest over your confession. Now the apostle is one who breaks new ground or who establishes new works, establishes new things. And the priest is one who reconciles man to God. So what God is doing, he's watching over your confession. He's watching over your confession in order to be able to do those two things. Either to reconcile you to God to if, if you're 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 apart from God to reconcile you to God or if you're getting ready to do something to begin to make declaration with you to come into agreement with you concerning the places you're getting ready to go the new grounds that you're you're willing to break either one of those two, two things you want Jesus operational on your behalf now the other thing that confession does is that confession activates the power of agreement of the Holy Ghost see the the Holy Ghost is your principal prayer partner. I mean, we, you know, a lot of us have natural prayer partners. For example, Gail is, you know, my, my prayer partner. A lot of us have natural prayer partners, friends or spouses or significant others or whoever they might happen to be. 
But the most important prayer partner you need is the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is God himself. And you want God to agree with you concerning the things that you're, you're praying about. To activate the power of agreement on your behalf where God is your partner who's activating the agreement means you're going to get what you're praying for. You know, and, and that's a significant thing. It's the most important thing is to have the Holy Ghost activated as your prayer partner. So one of the things that confession, so confession accomplishes uh, a number of different purposes that perhaps aren't immediately visible. One of them is, you know, and, and one of the things you want to do with confession, let me, let me give you an example. Under the, under the old covenant, there was the office of the prophet. And the role of the prophet was to hear the word of God. It was to speak the word of God out clearly, to be able to enunciate what God said so that the people could hear it, so that the people could believe it, so the people could begin to say it, which would make their faith rise, and then God could do what he said he, what he announced to the prophets that he was going to do. Nothing has changed about that. I mean, you have the prophet, the Holy Spirit. The prophet is living upon the inside of you. And God will speak to you concerning situations that he wants to bring to pass in your life. But the idea is that if you don't have faith for those things, or if you can't believe them, or you can't trust in them, or you don't have faith for them, he's not going to be able to do it. So the, and, and one of the po most powerful things about confession is to take the word that God spoke over you and to be able to declare it and to make your faith grow in that. Just like the old covenant prophet, to receive that word and to begin to speak it, to speak it out, to get the word out so that you can hear it, so that your faith can rise and God can do that thing for you. It is, I, I tell you, it's, 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 the, it's one of the missing links in seeing God bring the supernatural to pass yeah. for you that people just don't do. We miss the idea of confession because it takes some time. You know, you have to spend some time doing it and you have to put off doing other things and you have to make a dedicated uh, a, a amount of time to say, you know, I, I've got my con these confessions. I need to spend some time doing it. And I need to put off other things. I need to put my phone away. I need to to uh, 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 put. I, I need to put work on hold. I'll tell you, for you know, for me, one of the most important uh, uh, tools, one of the most important weapons that I have for a business success is the power of the Holy Ghost. Is the power of the supernatural working on my behalf. And and to activate the power of the supernatural through confession and through belief in the word and through praying in tongues is more important than any other duty I can do in, in uh, uh, the business realm. And uh, I, I, like I say, I know a lot of people wouldn't necessarily believe that. They wouldn't necessarily say that or they wouldn't do it. But I've seen the power of the supernatural work. I've seen it work too often. I've seen it work too well. And I know how it works. And I understand that those things, that the power of confession of his word, the power of speaking his word, the power of getting it out there so that you can hear it and he can hear it, so that you can get those things out there. It's the most important thing you can do to further your business interests, to further your relational interests, to further your ministry interests and those things, is to get that word and to begin to confess, confess the word. Now, you can confess this word. You can pick something out of here and you can begin to confess it. They're just, so, so, you know, uh, let me just, uh, a, a couple of scriptures. I, let, let me give you just a, just a couple of quick scriptures. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know that I have it down. Oh, hallelujah. Shut up, O Chorus. One of them is Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse, I think it's verse 18. Psalm 119, verse 18 says, Open thou my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. In other words, I don't want to just read the word. I don't want to read it. I don't want to memorize it. I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, just just get it out there. I need my eyes open to the importance of the uh, the importance of the word. And Job thirty four thirty two says, uh, 
how not that one I do have written down. <laughs> that which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do it no more. But the important part of that is not so much the iniquity, because we're not out trying to do iniquity. It's to open my eyes. That which I see not, I want you to teach that to me so that I can obey it, so that I can receive it, because there are treasures in this word. There are hidden riches and secret places in this word, and I need those things to be active in my life. So I, my confession, my daily confession before God needs to be, you, what I don't see, what I don't know, you teach it to me. Teach me what I need to know. He's the teacher. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. That's one of the reasons you want to speak in tongues. You want to activate tongues. There's the Holy Spirit as a teacher. So God, that which I can't see, you teach to me. Open my eyes to see wonderful things out of your law. Um, hallelujah. Uh, uh, Joshua 1.8. Uh, yeah, yeah. Joshua 1.8. Do not let this book of the law depart from out of thy mouth. But be careful to meditate, to do everything that is written. Actually, it says to be careful to observe to do everything that is written there, and then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and successful. It is the only place in the Bible where the word success is actually used. But what he's talking about doing is he's talking about meditation, but he's talking about confession also, to mutter, to speak. He's talking about meditating by speaking. So meditation has a, 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 an extraordinary thing, yes. an extraordinary power to meditation, and there's an extraordinary power to confession. When you are speaking what God said, when you're confessing God's word over yourself, confessing God's word over your life, one of the things that it does is it changes the atmosphere around you. Uh, which is huge because the atmosphere around you, you know, they got this new thing now. You've probably seen, you know, you go to the gas station and you start putting gas in, and all of a sudden a voice comes on. They got like a TV and they're talking about God only knows what kind of trash, you know, on the at the gas station, you know. And uh, uh, so the idea is that sound, there's an incredible dominion that goes with sound. And if you're not determining what it is that you're hearing, somebody else is going to determine what you're hearing. And you can be assured that that somebody else is probably not, you know, born again, or they're probably not, certainly don't have your spiritual best interests at heart, or they don't have the best interest that God would have for you, the things that God would want to do for you. So you want to be careful what you are hearing. Some of uh, the Proverbs 4 talks about, be careful, guard your ears. Be careful what you are hearing. You Confession allows you to control what you're hearing in that environment. For example, if you're out walking or you're out in, in your house or you're taking a shower or whatever those things have to do and you begin to make your confessions, you are governing what you're hearing in that particular environment okay. and you change the atmosphere and the atmosphere changes from doubt to faith. It can change from fear to faith. It can change from lack to uh, uh, abundance through the changes of the mind because confession will cause you to change your mind. The more you confess, the more you declare, the more things you say. So to, to, to say, listen, I'm going to spend time confessing the word I'm going to spend time confessing things that God may have spoken to me at one time or another, either through a dream, either through the word, either through the prophetic word that came from somebody else or wherever. If I'm spending my time doing those things, I'm allowing the word of God to change my thinking. But more importantly, I'm allowing my confession to set the atmosphere out there of the things. It also, it establishes the, that I'm, the things that I'm going to believe are what the things that I'm going to hear because faith comes by hearing so does everything else fear comes by hearing everything comes by hearing so your daily confession of what you want God to do for you of who you believe God is of the power of God to move on your behalf is absolutely it's just critical and remember that Jesus is the apostle and the high priest over that I made some 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 notes uh, in Proverbs eighteen twenty one is the law of the tongue. You know, death and life is in the power of the law, uh, power of the tongue. Confession activates that law, 
In other words, you begin to confess the scriptures. You begin to birth life over certain things. Yeah. Over you, you begin to birth life. And so you activate the law of the tongue Amen. by confession. Amen. You operate, you use it. It's like a weapon. It's like a tool that you're using. You begin to make declaration over Amen. things. You begin to speak over your body, you know. Um, I, I, personally, I think one of the, you know, I, I had, uh, this was a, year, a number of years ago, I had a real problem with my knee. And uh, uh, I went to the doctor, and the doctor said, well, he said, you know, it's, uh, there's nothing we can do for you. He said, you, you, you banged your knees up so badly. I was, uh, uh, when I went to, uh, in, in college, I was a cross country. I went to college on a cross country scholarship. And, um, and I would run a l long distances every day. I did that for years and years and years. And I beat my knees up so bad that they just, you know, they, 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 what they said was the, the, the cartilage, I guess, or whatever it is that's between the knee that softens the blow is gone. You know, they said, you just, you, you just worked it away. And they said, you know, we can give you some, some medication that's going to help the pain go away, but we can't fix it. There's, there's no fixing that, you know. Well, I didn't believe that for one second. I believed that the Word of God would fix it and that I could command the word that I can speak to the word that the angels of the Lord would come at night and they'd minister to my knee they'd rebuild my knee and strengthen out my knee and it wasn't too long I don't know I don't even remember how long it took but it wasn't too long before the pain was completely gone and uh, uh, ne never returned and you know the doctor that I go to now he says he, he, he says you know he said do not jog <laughs> he said you have nothing left in that knee you know and, uh, you know, if you beat up that knee, he said, it'll probably be okay like you are. But if you beat it up, you're going to have to have a new knee, you know, knee replacement. I'm not doing that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to make the confession that God is rebuilding that knee because he healed my knee Amen. and he took care of it. He said, it's, you know, blood pressure, any kind of sickness, any kind of disease, weight loss, any of those things. They begin with confession. They begin with the things that you say because the law of confession establishes what you believe and you, 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 you get that thing out there. So it activates that. It demonstrates your faith in God when you begin to say the things God said. It demonstrates your faith in God. When you begin to say the word, you begin to speak the word, it demonstrates your belief in God, your trust in God, that I trust his word. I trust his ability to bring that word to pass. I tell you, you know, some of the most supernatural things that have ever, ever happened to, uh, to us. You know, we, we had. Uh, I was driving one day. This was, this was, I don't know, a few years ago. I was driving to work one day, and um, and I was, I was driving over the skyway. You know, and you know, you see all the beautiful water out there, and all those beaches out there. You know, and most of my adult life, except for these periods of of where um, uh, we've, we've had uh, de demonic interruptions to our finances, let's say it that way. Except for that, most of my adult life, I've had a house at the beach. And, uh, but, this and, and but, but this particular time, we were in a real difficult situation, and I didn't have a house at the beach. Uh, but as I'm, I'm driving on the skyway, the Lord spoke to me, and the Lord said, you know, because I'm looking at that beautiful water out there, the Lord said, why don't you start calling in a house by the beach? Call, start calling in a house by the sea. Uh, hmm. Why haven't I been doing that? You know, I don't know why I haven't been doing that. So we, I started that day and every single day calling in a home by the sea. And it wasn't too much longer before, you know, supernaturally we were able to get a house by the sea. And uh, um, at the time, it was not possible. It just was so completely outside the realm of possibility that we could get a house by the sea somehow. But anyway, but... Confession. Confession breeds possession. That's how you take possession of the things in the realm of the spirit. You call forth those things that be not as though they are. Calling forth those things that be not as though they are is a subset of confession. It's a, it's a type of confession. It's making a type of confession. And you begin to claim things in the realm of the spirit. And believe God that he's going to make those things a reality. And one of my confessions, we have this, this property that we started working on. This was years ago. And, uh, and, and my confessions were, at the time, we, we 
fought such battles over this property, over getting permits. We, we, it took us three years to get a building permit on this thing. And all the, the things, and it was in my, you know, my, my confessions is the thing was permitted, it's financed, it's constructed, and it's sold. You know, and uh, those are the things. And the Lord actually spoke to me to call that thing sold, you know. I said, Lord, what, what, what words do you want me to say? Give me words to say over this property. He said, just call it sold. Just call it sold. So now today, all these years later, it's not sold yet, but it's partially sold. And it is uh, permitted, financed, and being constructed. So three of the four things are done, and the fourth is actually in the works. But it's been on my confession list for years. I've had to confess that thing for years. What does it matter how long it takes if it's something that's important? And, and, and that's how you get it. What difference does it make how long it takes? You, you need to keep doing it. It's how you uh, take possession of things in the realm of the supernatural. It's how you get God to be able to move for you in the supernatural. Well, you don't have the money to go buy something. You know, If you got the money to go buy something, you don't really need God to get involved in the thing with you anyway. But if you don't have any money and you believe in God for something, confession is the first calling forth that thing that be not as as uh, as though it is it also puts the demonic on notice concerning what you're believing you know and that you know he, he may be out there working against me but i'll tell you god's working for me and this is my confession that god's bringing in the things that i'm believing for and devil you can just take a hike you know <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. It just and it, it connects us with Jesus. It demonstrates our belief in Jesus that you are the apostle and high priest. So I just, I, you know, I encourage you. It's perhaps one of the, it, it's the forgotten or, or forsaken uh, tool that Christians don't use, that we don't use, is our confession over the word and our confession over ourselves and our confession over our spouses, you know, to make declaration. You know, the truth is that uh, uh, the Lord spoke to me years ago, and, and this is right after we'd gotten married. Now, Gail and I have been married for almost 30 years, and uh, we had a big fight one, one day, and we hadn't been married very long. We had a big fight, and it was basically it was over money. And um, I'd say it was a big fight. I don't know if it's really, it was a big fight. But it was a, let's, let's call it, it was a disagreement. And we had a disagreement over money. And uh, I felt so bad about it. So I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, what, you know, what, what do I do? And, uh, and the Lord said, don't speak to her about money. The Lord said, do not say anything to her about money. Do not say anything to her about what she spends, ever. And uh, he said, you he said you talk to me about situations. And he said, if, if you don't have the money, you ask me for more. You just, you know, believe me for more. But you don't talk to her about it. And uh, all these years later, I, I have violated that to my peril once in a while. <laughs> but not very often. We, don't, we really don't argue. We don't discuss money. We don't argue over money. We don't. It's not that... We don't come into agreement concerning the things that are important to us, you know, and we do. And if we're going through a particularly difficult time, she knows who we're going through a difficult time. I know we're going through a difficult time, and we've been through some difficult times, but we didn't have to argue over it. What we did was we believed God more, but we believe God for more. But the way that you do it is confession. That God, you said you were going to bring what we needed. You said you would meet us with what we need. Now, God, this is what we need. I need. I need you to show up. Uh, I need you to show up on this. It is a foreign thought to the natural mind. And if you want your mind to get over into the realm of the spirit, and confession helps you shape your mind. It helps you bring your mind over into the to the realm of the spirit. And it's such a it's such a powerful thing. It, 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 one of the things it does is it occupies your mind. Because fear, you know, if you're not choosing what's going to occupy your mind, somebody else is going to choose it for you. Fear, for example, fear will come into the unoccupied mind. But faith will rise through confession. So you begin to make your confession of the word, what you're believing God to do, the things that God has said over you, or whatever the case may be, there's no room for fear. And you get fear out by the confession of the word and by confession of faith. It 
will drive fear out of your mind. So it'll help you occupy your mind with the right things and, and, and not the wrong things. It is a wonderful, wonderful tool. And I just encourage you, you know, just start, just pick your two or three scriptures and start there, you know, and say, okay, what, what, are, what, are the, what, are, what am I believing God for, you know? Is there something that I'm believing God for? Just pick two or three and begin every day, you know, write and write them down. That's, I mean, it's critical to write them down. Write them down. Carry them around with you. Keep them in your Bible. Keep them on your, your dresser. And just start with a couple because you it's the habit you want to create. Have the, you know, we associate the word habit as, 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 as a, with bad habit, you know. But the reality of habit is habit just means that something gets easier the more often you do it. And so if you get you a piece of paper and write down two or three things that you want to confess that you want God to do for you, start there. Begin to do that, and what will happen is you'll begin to make a habit of it. Begin to build the habit. You begin to build the habit, and all of a sudden, God will speak to you something in a dream. You write that down. God will speak to you in a, a, a meeting. He'll speak to you through the voice of somebody else, and you write those things down, and you begin to add those to your confessions. And pretty soon, you got a pretty long list of confessions, and you're confessing the things that you want to have brought to pass. Confession is, 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 is if there's a way out of adversity, confession is the road that grace is the way out. And uh, so I just, I encourage you to uh, do that. Hallelujah. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Let me encourage you, I want to encourage you to look on our uh, website. We have our, our, we have a website called christianfinancialpublishing.com and we have, all of our books are on there. Most of our books have now been translated in Spanish and they're on that uh, website in Spanish. I encourage you to Look at that. We also have a website called Give Me a Year, I give, and it's GiveMeAYear.net. And I just encourage you to go and look at that. There's a lot of different things on there, uh, different essays. Both uh, we have them in English and we have them in Spanish as well. Uh, essays that uh, speak over the weapons of our warfare and the tools of of, of our warfare. And so, yes, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let my precious. I just wanted to share the story about. Uh, when uh, past, uh, Pastor Kevin and I, years ago, this is moon, many, many moons ago, the Lord spoke to me um, to, to go and walk this property over on the causeway. This was back in the 90s. And um, I haven't walked many things. And we're just being led by the Spirit. So I had a group of women, and they were going to go walk. And maybe I told you this over the internet. But anyway, it's just so powerful because he gave me, I happen to go through some of my prayer notes. And so it's really, I encourage you. It's not that you have to write everything down, but God, you want to see God answer your prayers. And, and so um, anyway, so this is back in the 90s. And um, as I was with these women that were part of this prayer group, I said, um, I really feel that we're to walk this area on the causeway. Would you pray and fast? And then we're going to do it on this day. So, okay. So it comes to be that day. It was, it was, a, it was an area where there was... I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell them. Yeah, anyway, so anyways, we come to the day. And, and Pastor Kevin, none of the ladies are going to do it. Okay, they the ones that were going to go with me. Now they're not going to go with it. I said, I want you to pray because I want you to be in order at home. And if you don't feel like you should do this, don't do it. Because we were going to go and pray over this a group of strip joints that were on the causeway at the time. On the causeway, there, Joe Redner had many strip joints along the causeway. You remember where that was? Anyway, and, and it just bothered me because I really, we'd come home from church and and I see, I felt like there were a lot of Christian men in there, and it really bothered me. So I just felt to, that we were supposed to walk over. That was Joshua from Joshua. And he also gave me Nathan. And so uh, we were driving back a couple weeks ago, a week or so ago, from the from from Vero, and, and I, I felt like I needed to go back and look when I had walked that property. So anyway, so he had given me Nathan. And, and I had it in my notes from 1995. So I want to tell you, even if you only write a little bit, you still have those scriptures. You still have what God's instruction was. 
And so, so we're having dinner. So, so I, I kind of noted that, and I, Pastor Kevin and I had been talking about Nahum, which is the, the, the book of Jonah. The next one was Nineveh's when God came and destroyed Nineveh. Okay, Jonah and, and, and Nahum is that prophecy. So anyway, so, um, so I, I see the notes there. And uh, so we happened to go to dinner with uh, uh, our, my stepson and his wife last Friday night. And so here, they don't know we've been talking about this walking thing. You know, we're just, I was just doing what God said to do. Okay, I didn't get it from somebody else. It was just being obedient. And, um, and we just walked and we didn't hold a sign up. We didn't do anything. We just walked the property and prayed. And Joe Redner pulled up when we were there. We didn't say anything to him. We just, we just did what we were supposed to do and left, you know. So what was so interesting is, of course, that whole area is gone now. But what my son-in-law, I mean, my stepson said um, to us when we were having dinner the other night, he said, do you remember the property that y'all walked all those years ago on the causeway when the strip, you know, the joints were all there? And, and I said, yeah, yeah, we were just talking about it a couple, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And he said, well, you know, that, that is not even on the map. You can't find it. It is gone, never to be ever. It's not platted. It's not, you can't find any record of it. When God took it out, he took it out all the way. He, it's no. never, it's eradicated. Okay. Come on. Hallelujah. And, and, and so, so that was in the, in 95. You don't know what you're doing today and how it is affecting change. Those little steps of obedience, those little following the Holy Spirit and doing and praying over a particular area. And wow, God will use that. And so don't despise the day of small things that you do. And here did it. I didn't, you know, he, he happened to tell us that at dinner, you know. I mean, and it was so, there are things that you have done and people that have gone before us. That we're walking in the blessing because of things, prayers that other people have prayed. And the thing, and when God tells you to do something as silly or whatever it may seem, do it and be faithful. Amen. And God will do his part. And so that was such a wonderful, a wonderful testimony, a wonderful story of an area. And so we just prayed, we confessed, he gave us the scripture, and God did it. Amen. And so those words that he gives you over those situations, you speak to the mountain to be removed and to go into the sea. Hallelujah. And don't doubt in your heart. So I encourage you, continue to speak, even though it doesn't look like when Pastor Kevin said the Lord spoke to him about calling in the, the, the place on the beach, we had no money. And we thought it might be this coast. So we just started walking down the beach that day. He didn't ask us, do you have money? He just said, why don't you call that in the house by the city? He didn't say, you got to get the money for it. So we just did this is the basic. We started to call in the house by the sea. Amen. Then we started looking for a house by the sea. Hallelujah. And it is truly supernatural that the Lord has given us that, ha that house back in Vero. So anyway, thank you for being with us tonight. And you're, again, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And we thank you for being with us. And we hope to see you on Sunday. God bless you. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? That's awesome. I, I mean, and then here's the, I mean, you need to.